welcome to Poland Daily Travel. This is the Citadel, the wall of the Citadel. 36 hectares of pure uh, Russian splendor, designed after the uprising of 1830. It took a couple of years to build and was delivered to the Tsar's son, Alexander, uh, for his birthday. How's that for a birthday present? At uh, today's rates, it would cost about 125 uh, million euros to build it, or more. I think that's a low estimate. I think it's closer to 200 million myself. But uh, yeah, uh, they had to displace a lot of people to, to create the citadel. But why did they make it? Well, after the uprising, they wanted to show that uh, Russians are very powerful, something that sounds familiar. And to show that Russians are very powerful, they built a huge fortress here. It's on the edge of Zhaliburz and the river Vistula, right down there. And you can see here it says, uh, military area, keep out, no entry. I can tell you that's true because I once took a walk in there. And uh, uh, after I was... Uh, uh, well, let's just say I went over a fence I shouldn't have gone over. Uh, not realizing it was a military area, and a uh, soldier ran out to assure me that uh, if the general saw me, uh, we'd all be in trouble. And so he walked me uh, very nicely out. Um, at any rate, this was a famous prison. Many, uh, many uh, of the greatest, uh, Joseph Conrad's father was incarcerated here, uh, as was uh, Joseph, uh, or Josef, uh, Yusef, Pusutski, Joseph Pusutski, the ruler of Poland in the interwar uh, period from the 20s, well, just prior, up to prior the, to the Second World War. Its, uh, its main purpose during the Warsaw Uprising was it housed the Germans. I mean, they, they had a nice big fortress here with high walls, It'd be hard to get into, um, and uh, it, it separated the old town from Jalibors and was really a fly, uh, not a fly, a huge boa constrictor uh, in the ointment, a massive uh, thing to get around. As you can see, this wall goes way down, way down there, all the way around, I mean, it's a couple of kilometers or so around it, maybe more, and uh, it is terrifically impressive uh, from both the outside and the inside. This is a park. There used to be a moat here. There was water going all the way around it. And uh, no longer. It's turned into a park in the 1950s. And uh, it's a very popular place for strolling uh, on, a nice, on a nice day. And it's suddenly becoming a nicer day, if cold. Um, this is, as I say, on the, in, uh, in Jolly Bush. It's not far from Wilson Square. And uh, the start of the uprising, which was on uh, Kreshinskiego Street. I don't want to leave you the impression that, that this fortress was really impregnable, uh, impenetrable, uh, unable to be uh, breached during World War II. It's just that uh, more that it was in the way and you needed uh, to really to make something of a, you need some artillery and you needed some dynamite and things like that to make a real job of it. and. Uh, it just wasn't enough time for the insurgents to really have a serious go uh, at doing that. Now, between, if you look at this wall here, this wall is on the Jolibourg end, 
which is north Warsaw, where the insurgents were. They still kept control of it. It's also where, by accident, as we said before, the uprising began. If you go to the extreme southern end, you're getting close to the old town, the new town, old town area. So uh, it's, it's quite a big, uh, a big fortress, because that would be a couple of kilometers uh, from here to there anyway, at least. And I can tell you from walking around in there, the place is, is pretty big. 36 hectares is uh, getting on for uh, uh, 90 acres or something like that. No, I'm just taking a guess around that area, 85 to 90. So it's not a small place. Now, there are two museums there. Oh, I wanted to say first that the Russians had already determined at the end of the 19th century that the fortress was not going to be very much use in a new war with the kind of weaponry, the cannons, artillery, uh, and other things that would be developed eventually, the tank that it, the, the citadel would be useless to really hold uh, in a modern war. Nonetheless, the, uh, the place was not, uh, it, was, it was scheduled to be demolished, knocked to the ground completely, and uh, the First World War broke out. And pretty soon, the uh, Germans came, and they sort of took it over as a, um, well, just occupied it. And uh, it stayed in, that, uh, in the German hands till the end of the First World War, when it became a Polish fort. And it basically was used for training and things like that. Again, not a serious fortress, but uh, at least had walls around it so it could be private military area. And uh, as far as Gump would say, that's all I got to say about that. See you on the next program. Thanks for watching.